Uh, we have, the last one is an abort to orbit. Uh, should we have an engine failure, we can still make it to a lower orbit, as was described earlier, at 105 miles. Mm -hmm. Discovery, Crest Amico, Group Banjul 109. Okay. And you've got that checked out. Yes. Yeah. Cut off call, indicating they can, receive, they can uh, proceed to normal main engine cutoff on two engines if that were to become necessary. Discovery, performance, nominal. And as each second ticks off, the United States minutes, space seconds, program 1300, 13, is looking better and better and coming back. Well, it appears that we are going to make it to orbit. Discovery, single engine, man, jewel, 104. Everything is... That call indicates uh, Discovery could achieve a uh, single engine uh, landing at... Uh, Banjul, if that were to become necessary. Banjul, one of the transatlantic uh, abort sites. In engine start, seven, six, start, three. This is a replay of what one, happened a short while zero, ago here at and liftoff. Liftoff. Americans return to space as Discovery clears the tower. Roger roll, Discovery. Crew confirms roll program, Houston now controlling. Three inches at 104 percent. Three good APUs, three good fuel cells. Tony Clark is in Houston at the Johnson Space Center, and as we indicated, seven seconds after Discovery was off the launch pad 39B, Johnson assumed control over there. Tony, what was it like in that room where you were? We felt the earth shake here in Florida. Bernie, it was exciting. People here are all excited. In mission control, about a block away, cheers went up. Everybody's excited. Everybody is waiting, though, for a very important call, a, a call that's coming up, and that's Miko. That's main engine cutoff. Dick Covey said prior to this launch, said, stick with us till Miko, because that's, that's the important call when we get to orbit and uh, the main engine's cut off. But here we've had cheers periodically, cheers as the shuttle launched off the pad. Cheers went up again when we had uh, the separation of the solid rocket boosters. People have been standing around the monitors here in the uh, simulation room in, in building 9A throughout the morning watching, hoping that things would, uh, that the weather conditions would improve, wanting to see a launch today. They got what they wanted. Uh, they saw the launch. We saw thumbs go up. As I said, we had cheers go up in the, uh, the Space Center and Mission Control here in the uh, Building 9A. People are just very excited. It has been a long two and a half years for the uh, people here at the Johnson Space Center. Everybody is much like uh, a family here at, the, uh, at NASA, and everybody has been waiting and hoping for this. Now everybody is standing by waiting for that call that comes eight minutes after uh, launch, the uh, the Miko call, the main engine cutoff when they get up to orbit. And as, as Bonnie knows quite well, that's, that's perhaps our next really big call. Bernie? Bonnie, uh, what does it look like? Okay, Was that it? Yeah, we're nominal Miko. Okay, and uh, so that means as you smile and I smile and everybody's happy, that means at this point, means at this point we can get on with the business of what we're supposed to do in orbit. We're going to deploy a satellite uh, today, and then we're going to perform some experiments in material science and in uh, medicine, biology, physiology, and come back in four days. Yes, and they're going to put out that satellite in a little less than six hours. Your network of record will continue its live coverage of this truly historic launch of Discovery in a moment. For main engine start, seven, Great. six, start, three, two, Americans return to space as Discovery clears the tower. Program. Roger roll, Discovery. Crew confirms roll program. Houston now controlling. As the Discovery astronauts head for orbit, we're going to head across the way from the Kennedy Space Center here. Jeff Levine, you were with these thousands of people who are out there watching. What's it like out there now? Well, Bernie, it's pure happiness. I think that's the proper way of characterizing it. You can see perfectly the liftoff, the orange plume breaking the sky. 
And then a few seconds later, you could hear the roar, and then you could hear the cheers, and you could see the tears. And one person who came all the way from the Washington, D.C. area is Mary Beard. Your first launch in person, what was it like? Tell me. Absolutely fantastic. Unreal. It's hard to believe. <laughs> what brought you down here? It's a long way. I've always wanted to see the shuttle go up. Last mission, we were working with the computer, so I couldn't get down. I promised myself I'd get down. Before I retired, I retired September 7th, and... So you're well, working with the space program? No, not no more. I just retired. But you NASA. did? Yeah. Did you, ha did you have a lot of trepidation about it? After all, uh, we all know what happened last time. I thank God it went up safe. Thank God. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> yes. Mary Beard, thanks for coming. Last and we're going to throw to Bernie, and back to you, Bernie. The Commander-in-Chief, the President of the United States, has been watching what's happened here. Now, unless someone else has broken the, the news already, before we begin, I'd like to tell you that at 11.37, the Space Shuttle Discovery lifted off at the Kennedy Space Center. <laughs> and it's now headed into orbit, and America is back in space. We're now looking forward to the successful completion of the Discovery mission and the safe return of her five-member crew. We salute the bravery of Rick Hawk, Dick Covey, Pinky Nelson, Mick, Mike Lounge, and Dave Hilmers, and we ask God to bless this important voyage. They sure were considerate in their timing. Just gave me time to get out here without being late. And, well, after looking down the list of what all your organizations have done, I have to say you are America's good Samaritans, and I'm delighted to welcome you to the White House. This is a very special day for me. It's the last time I'll get to present the presidential citations for private sector initiatives. This is a program that we started here in 1984 to help recognize the outstanding volunteer efforts of business organizations and dedicated people like you. Today, there are some 4,500 sea flags waving. As President Reagan uh, speaks there at the White House, and we heard him announce to his audience, if they hadn't heard, that the uh, discovery is heading for orbit. I just can't help uh, remembering that uh, January day, I was at the White House along with uh, the other anchors. We were getting a briefing because the President's State of the Union address was to be delivered that night, and we're sitting in the Roosevelt Room, just sitting down to lunch. And Donald Reagan, the then Chief of Staff, was seated at the end of the table. An aide walked in, handed him a note. His face just froze. And, of course, he was announcing that the shuttle Challenger had blown up. And you recall what the President went through that day, the State of the Union address, what you, all of us, the nation, the families, the relatives, the friends, people around the world went through. What a difference nearly three years have made. The United States space program is heading on the wings of the shuttle, the orbiter right now going into orbit, and we'll continue our live coverage, not only from the Kennedy Space Center, but from the Johnson Space Center as well. We'll be right back in just a moment. Liftoff. Americans return to space as Discovery clears the tower. Program. Roger roll, Discovery. Crew confirms roll program. Houston now controlling. Three engines at 